Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, good afternoon, friends, colleagues, faculty members, students, staff, and honored guests. Thank you for joining us today for this special announcement about the future of the law school. I know you actually want to hear the announcement. You've enjoyed the food. You hear the beverages coming. You wonder what this is all about. Uh, but I have to spend a moment uh, just reflecting on the law school's uh, history, and it really is just a moment. So in September, UBC Law will celebrate its 70th anniversary. In the brief arc of its history, uh, the law school has gone from the army huts on the edge of the Point Grey campus to one of the top 40 law schools in the world. And that we also seek beyond that to become the world, one of the world's great centers for legal education and research. For people who have had a chance to hear the story of the law school's birth and have had a chance to follow our progress over the past 70 years, you would know this has been an amazing trajectory. And it's been fueled by the commitment of each generation. But beyond Peter's gift, uh, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that it's uh, meant to be an inspirational gift, not just all of us to think about what law schools are for and what we can do for our students in the broader world. Uh, but it's also an opportunity to encourage others to be ambitious for the future of the school. Uh, our progress over the past seven years has taken place because each generation of graduates uh, has felt committed to making sure that this law school represented excellence in the pursuit of justice. And for that reason, the idea of continuing that ongoing commitment to the law school, we're also announcing today a $10 million campaign to add to the endowment for the law school. Um, we want to encourage alumni and friends of the law school to join with Peter in ensuring the future success of the school. By the end of this campaign, the law school's endowment will have grown to $50 million a year, which spins off for people who do the math under our current board policies, about $1.75 million a year to support students, to support faculty, and to support excellence in programs at the law school. <laughs> Last but not least, um, I just wanted to mention, because uh, some of you may not be aware, that the faculty actually currently benefits from um, works of art that actually Peter uh, donated, the Legends Begin sculpture that's on the fourth floor terrace that students, I understand, want access to, the uh, Herzog photos that are along this back wall, uh, along that hallway. Uh, and today, uh, we're also uh, unveiling, officially, the Eagle Mask by Heisel artist Lyle Wilson in the Law Library. Uh, and I think on the screen, somewhere around now, magically, we'll be seeing pictures of the newest uh, piece of art. And so thank you very much uh, for that gift as well. So, without further ado, please let me introduce you to Peter Eller, who graduated from UBC with a BA in History in 1968 and a law degree in 1971. I need to make sure that this works. Uh, dear law students, faculty, and honored guests, the most ba as mortals, our time on this earth is short. The most basic and precious asset we have is our time to treasure and respect. As a consequence, our youth are a very valuable and powerful, though sometimes overlooked group. It is you who must carry the torch of life, freedom, fairness, and the stability of our legal system and economy for those who follow. Contained within each of us is, in, is the power and spirit to do great good for our, fel for our fellow human beings or to do great harm. And it, it is incumbent upon us to equip you with the values, tools, and motivations to do great good. Through de deleveraging and decreasing revenues over the past decade, governments are unable to fund all the demands that are made on them on a constant basis. It is a great privilege for me to be in a position to help this law school with the creation of three significant permanent endowments for student support, faculty recruitment, and retention, and, stu and student programming together with fur further funding for the, uh, for the for faculty's Allard Prize for International Integrity. My gifts are meant to support the long-term success of the law school and enable it to establish and maintain pillars of excellence in human rights and international integrity and ethics, and take a leadership role 
in supporting the values associated with the six criteria of the Allen Prize. Courage, leadership, transparency, accountability, rule of law, and anti-corruption. These monies were created over three generations by my family, business associates, and scores of advisors and professionals. My hope is that my gifts with judicious and prudent long-term management will grow over time to help make the law school one of the best known and respected law schools in the world in terms of scholarship and leadership, and to infuse the concept of integrity and ethics to strengthen the rule of law in a more powerful and definable way in Canada and worldwide. The legal profession has more impact on our society than any other, and my gifts are intended to support the education of and help inspire students and others whose responsibility it will be to ensure that the lifeblood of ethics and justice for all are carried forward. You must recognize your human potential to support long-term stability and sustainability and collaborate and cooperate locally, provincially, federally, and internationally in all that you do to make a better world for all. The challenges that are facing us, facing the world today, are monumental but not more so than those of the past. We live in a time of constant communication, numerous lobbyists at the door of every politician, self-interest, self-preservation, too big to fail, too big to jail, too big to prosecute, get out of, get out of jail free cards through issuances of immunity and pardons, a willful blindness to recognize obvious facts, and a willful determination to distort them. Failure to balance our in institutions of enforcement with appropriate rules and regulations. Failure by self-governing bodies to discipline appropriately. Failure to recuse for obvious conflicts of interest. Power over principle. Power of monopolies. Failure to count and be transparent at every level, no matter the business, government body, or bureaucracy. Concentration of our media damaging our freedom of speech. Gaming of the legal system with constant delays and legal strategies at the expense of both, both financially and emotionally of a little guy who cannot possibly afford access. Prepared scripts of and other controls on elected parliamentarians. Failure of corporate bodies to penalize corporate incompetence and mistakes. Failure of investment and pension fund organizations to hold their pe people accountable. Failure to place management reward on the same level as the shareholder. And failure of government regulatory bodies to enforce rules and give access to a le level playing field. As someone who loves and is fascinated by history, I urge you to read David McCullough's books on the two US presidents, John Adams and Harry Truman. The political behaviors we are witnessing today in terms of power over substance, blind ambition, personality conflicts, self-interest for the short term, creation of uneconomic and unproductive jobs for votes, backstabbing, reckless adventures for war, have existed for centuries and occur everywhere in the world. What amazed me in the reading of these two books was the strength of these two leaders, their character, their honesty, their dignity, their independence, and their respect for public monies. These two presidents served out of a sense of obligation to a higher calling. The problems they faced were astounding, but that did not deter them, and they made a difference. I also urge you to look to the inspiring stories of the first honorees of the Aller Prize in 2013. The recipient of the prize, Anna Hazari, an Indian social activist, who has led hugely popular and effective grassroots movements to increase government transparency and investigate and punish public corruption. And the other honorees, Sima Samar, an Afghani women's and human rights advocate, an activist who is currently chair of the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission, and who at great daily personal risk has established and maintained schools for girls and Global Witness, an international NGO that works to address natural resource exploitation and corruption and the resulting poverty and human rights abuses worldwide. These individuals and organizations are making a profound, selfless difference in our world. 
In order to restore the checks and balances lost over the past two or three decades, which period was preceded by 50 years of relative financial stability, each and every one of you needs to honestly and actively believe that by coming together and exercising your collective and collaborative efforts, using your imagination and power of youth and vitality, you can affect necessary changes in laws and regulations and ensure that solid enforcement here and around the world. I am concerned about the feeling of power, powerlessness on the part of some youth that can be, can be seen in the fact that fewer and fewer of you, of you are voting in the belief that the system is rigged and controlled by money, power, and par party politics, which are not directed long-term to sensible and equitable policy decisions, and that you cannot influence the system. Within us all is the power to affect change and to help move and direct our colleagues and fellow citizens in the right direction. We must all take action to affect positive change in, in ways small and large each and every day. Throughout the last 4,000 years, all major civilizations, religions, and philosophies of the world, including ancient Egypt, the, the Greek and Roman empires, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism and all the other isms have embraced a simple concept called the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have it do unto you. This is what I believe is the moral and spiritual ethic that rests within each and every one of us. To see that our neighbors and citizens around the world are treated with humanity and dignity and that basic human rights are entrenched, maintained and increased as time involves. With all of our collective efforts ensuring that our legal system represents all persons. Marianne, Dean Marianne Bobinski and Assistant Dean External Relations Carrie Sulaski have been relentless in developing relationship with law faculties and other relevant organizations within Canada and internationally and maintaining relationships with alumni wherever they might be. And they have wholeheartedly dedicated their belief and energies in the vision and are indefatigable in their promotion of the six criteria of the Allard Prize. To a great extent, my donation and this naming is a testament to their, my lawyer Jeff Lister, and my nephew Rob King's persistence. Universities are filled with the usual politics of any organization, but I can without hesitation say that the dean and assistant dean, the faculty members, and the rest of the faculty team with whom I have had contact represent everything I can think of in terms of courage, leadership, transparency, and accountability for the benefit and the improvement of the rule of law. And so, it is here at UBC Law that I see the possibility of inspirational leadership and a catalyst for profound positive change on a global scale for generations to come. May you all have the strength and courage to use your collective intellects and common sense with humor and kindness to improve, extend, and rebalance the rule of law and thereby provide fundamental rights, equality, justice, order, and security for all now and in the future. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for those remarks. Uh, and to speak on behalf of the students, we have LSS President Andrea Frazier. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow law students. Some gifts simply take your breath away, and this is one of those gifts. Not only because of its amount, and not only because of the good uses to which it will surely be put, but because of the magnitude of positive change it will create for this generation and future generations. On behalf of the student body, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Peter Allard QC for this extraordinary gift. If 
if it takes a village to raise a child, it most definitely takes a community to develop students of the law into very capable lawyers and judges. Mr. Allard is a person who has been and continues to be a leader of our community. He generously supported the building of Allard Hall. And let me take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of all the students for the law school's world-class home. We spent hours upon hours within these walls. And we therefore really appreciate the abundance of natural light. I can tell you we save a ton of money on vitamin D supplements. Don't need to go to the tanning bed as much. We're good. But most importantly, Allard Hall is the home of our community. It's the place where we learn, laugh, study, and live. We could not ask for a better home. Yet as today's gift demonstrates, Mr. Allard's generosity continues. Once fully endowed, this gift will provide almost $1 million a year in funding in perpetuity. Students today and four generations to come will directly benefit in many ways. And I know that all the students here would love to hear the ways in which this gift is going to make a concrete difference in all of your lives. So let me tell you a few of them. Making it through law school is not an easy task for many. Students often need financial help. We can look forward to the addition of new awards and bursaries, along with funding for student summer work experiences. The backbone of our law school community is our faculty. And let me take this moment to specially mention our Dean, Marianne Babinski, who has been a champion of the law school and who has worked tirelessly with community leaders such as Mr. Allard during her time as Dean. As students, we will never forget the impact of the many professors who have helped shape our view of the law over our years here at Allard Hall. Mr. Allen's gift will ensure that our community is able to attract and retain the very best. As our faculty is supported in their research, this will provide valuable opportunities for students to participate in that research, which will prove invaluable for our futures as well. In addition, this donation includes a significant endowment for experiential learning. And this is something that I'm particularly interested and excited about. During my time here at Allard Hall, as many of you know, I've worked a lot at our student legal clinic, and my work there has shown me the value and importance of hands-on learning. Experiential learning connects the theory of law with the reality of people's lives. Dealing with real issues gives students relevant insight into people, their problems, and their needs. It also shows us the importance of using the power that we have as law students and future lawyers to help address those very needs. Finally, this gift will ensure the continuation of the Allard Prize for International Integrity and related activities that benefit students, such as internships, funded ed funding for externships, and further research opportunities. The Allard Prize is a truly unique initiative and we as students are extremely proud of our law school's role in promoting human rights and combating corruption internationally. Mr. Allard, your gift is a truly remarkable legacy. It will allow our community the chance to dream big and to make those dreams a reality. Ultimately, the best way to express gratitude is through action. It's my hope that as graduates of the Peter A. Allard School of Law, we go into the world and live the principles of the community that educated us. Whatever area of the law you end up practicing in, wherever you are in the world, please remember your position of privilege and give back as Mr. Allard has so generously done. Strive to reflect the values and goals of the Allard Prize. Act with courage in all your endeavors. Demand transparency and accountability from all levels of government. Fight corruption and other abuses of power. Defend the rule of law and always protect one of our core democratic principles, equality for all. 
This gift is about caring and compassion for the students. It will provide present and future students of law with the confidence to meet these challenges. And for that, Ms. Stroud, we thank you. You're a very special person indeed. Thank you again, Jay, for those wonderful remarks. Um, thank you again uh, to Mr. Allard. Um, I have to say, uh, I hope some of the students here today will have the opportunity to meet with you. Uh, they've certainly heard from your remarks, your passion for justice, uh, and the way in which you care so deeply about students in the law school and what they will do with their careers. Um, your commitment to law school has created this foundation for the law school's future success. Uh, and uh, we will strive in all ways to live up to the ambitious vision that you've set for us. Uh, I would like to invite everyone to join in a little bit of a thing that we don't usually do. It's, I'm reading aloud, it's a small glass of champagne or sparkling water uh, in honor of the special occasion. Uh, and so I believe magically back here, uh, you will find some champagne and some sparkling water for those who are going to class. And uh, I invite you to, uh, to toast uh, the new future of the law school uh, and to thank Mr. Allard. And as well, feel free to uh, go and see the new mask in the, uh, in the law library. Thank you very much for being here today.